Welcome back to this wealth edition of Money Makers. Well, hedge funds are something that have earned a reputation for causing turmoil on the market and driving down prices. But investors can in fact use them to their advantage. Here to talk to us about this and how it can be done is a guy called Rick Steele from Tech Invest. He joins us in the studio. Rick, thanks for joining us on Money Makers. Hello, Peter. Now, how are you? Good now, to see you. It's great to have you here because hedge funds have caught uh, possibly an unfair <laughs> shellacking um, because of the short selling. And tell us about Tech Invest first, and we'll get to the, the hedge funds after that. Okay. Well, Tech Invest is a boutique manager, so we are a small manager, not a large manager, and we invest in global share markets. Mm. Uh, I guess the differentiating feature for us is that we both invest in companies that we think are good prospects, right. but we also sell companies that we think have poor prospects. Mm. The classic hedge fund strategy. Okay, so you, uh, are you a long short fund? Well, you would call us a long short fund. Specifically, the fund that we manage is market neutral. So we, we, we attempt to match our long investments against our short sales so that our net exposure to share markets is nil. Okay. So how have you done this year? Because a lot of long short funds have done pretty well this year in a pretty tough market. Well, it's, it's been a good environment for, for long short funds because there's been a lot of volatility and a lot of opportunity. And we've been able to participate in that, fortunately, for our clients. Mm. Uh, over, the re over the year, we've returned around 14%. That's mm. plus 14%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our, our benchmark is cash, mm. and that would be around uh, 8%. Okay. Now, we have a, a, a chart you brought in as well. Well, the chart was uh, really just to highlight how uh, hedge funds in Australia have performed mm. against um, share markets more generally. Mm. Um, and so there, it, there it is. Yeah. I, I guess what it's saying is that uh, this, is a, this is a fund that was uh, prepared by Australian fund monitors, mm. who I think you may have spoken with. Yeah, uh, Chris Gosselin is in our program. Yeah, that's right. And what he did was survey around 200 uh, funds in Australia managed yeah. by Australian managers. And he summarised the returns in this chart, which show that um, absolute return funds have had a small decline over the past year. So they're around 4%. So I always, Roughly. I always say that pe not all, all people can understand charts, so let's just mm. go through it. So the, the stock market's lost over 20%, that's ASX 200. You've got the MSCI index, it's down about 16-17%. We've got the S&P 500 in the US down about, what, 15, uh, 15 and absolute uh, return funds about 4% down. That's right. Okay. So if there's going to be an environment where hedge funds can really show their wares, it's these sort of tough times mm -hmm. because hedge funds are built on the basis that they're seeking to preserve capital and they do so by hedging out the major share market risks. Okay, now I know there's been some media commentators who have unfairly called hedge funds parasites. In fact, I've been one of them at times. Right. Now, now, tell us why they're not parasites. I think that's a fair, a fair question that a lot of people would like to know. Well, if you could believe the press, uh, the entire cause of those sharp declines in share markets mm. would be laid at the feet of hedge fund managers like yeah. ourselves. Mm. Well, clearly that's not correct. No. Um, it, I can understand the sentiment. It would be nice to be able to somehow remove selling pressure from stocks and, and hold company valuations ab above their fair value. We'd or all, we'd, we all Wouldn't prefer that, that. Nice? that. would be nice. Very nice indeed. But reality in the end will bite and in the end it, a, a markets will drive to the efficient price for those companies. Um, one thing that's misunderstood, I think, in, uh, in the act of short selling is that it's a key, uh, it's a key, it's at the heart of managing risk, it's at the heart of establishing fair prices uh, in our marketplace, and for example, um, it is very important to be able to raise capital efficiently so that companies can grow, employ labour and become prosperous, and without a proper functioning market in which you can manage risk, in that, in that capital raising process, that simply wouldn't happen. You know? mm. So I think it's, it's a fundamental part of our, of our financial markets. And I, and I guess the, the concept of naked short selling has actually, in a sense, been laid at the foot of hedge funds as well. And I think that's probably created a bit of a, a, a negative for hedge funds as well. I'm not sure what naked short selling really means. <laughs> um, in the end, if you sell a stock, you have to meet the settlement. And to do that, if you haven't got the stock, you simply have to borrow it. Um, is, is it a practice that's always been around? Has it always been around, or is it something that's been introduced in recent times? 
Oh, short selling is a very large, legitimate, mm. and uh, long-standing practice, mm. um, and it has been um, part of the efficient functioning of our market what for a long time. What about borrowing with shares? Has that always been around? Sure, it's a, it's it's a deep and liquid market. Okay, and and through the bull time as well. Okay, exactly. Uh, I guess th these are the questions that people shoot to me mm. all the time as well. Mm. So, I'd, well, I've got to you. I'd like to ask, but the the fact that the the penalty of not actually producing the shares when you're supposed to is so small, do you think that's a problem? Should the penalty be bigger if you don't stump up the shares when you're supposed, supposed to? Well, I'll, that's a very specific question mm. for a very specific instance. Mm. In the main, in Australia, I understand mm. that stocks are first borrowed and then sold and then later repurchased, hopefully at a profit. Mm. But it could well be, of course, that the stocks are repurchased at a loss, in which case the yeah, hedge fund manager loses and yeah. on behalf of himself and, and the clients. Now, one thing a lot of people don't realise is that hedge funds can be for retail investors, and in your fund in particular is for retail investors. Yeah, I don't see any reason why retail investors can't benefit from the return and risk profile that hedge funds deliver. Mm. Um, it's not the sole preserve of institutional investors to be able to take advantage of that. I think there's a very important role to play in any portfolio for hedge funds because you can get returns in, in, up mar in, in down markets as well as up markets yep. and that offsets the risks of investing in, in share markets alone. Especially when you can do 14% when everyone's, everyone's going, doing negative. Um, I, I guess another interesting thing is that a lot of people lump hedge funds as all being the same sort of thing, but they are a, an enormous range of different sort of investment vehicles. There is a whole range of strategies and they can be in different markets, they can be in illiquid markets, in liquid markets, they can employ leverage, they can not employ leverage, they mm. can short sell. There's a whole range of different activities. I think the, <coughs> the major differentiating feature of a hedge fund is that it seeks to preserve capital, particularly in down markets. Mm. That would be the major, the major feature to my mind. Okay. And if people want to know more about that your, your uh, fund, I, I presume you have a website that... Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah and we, we list some names of companies we hold in, in the portfolio and so on. Okay. Um, so in terms of, um, you know, retail investors, uh, are they at the moment big participants in hedge funds? Um, I, I'm not certain of that, that question, but I, my understanding is that, that retail investors participate in, in funds with hedge fund characteristics alongside all managed funds. Mm. You know, the, the beauty about the Australian market is that if you manage money, you'll be licensed. Mm. And if you offer it to retail investors, it will be by way of a registered uh, product disclosure statement. Yeah. And a number of those are managed by hedge fund managers. So I would say that there are quite a few hedge funds that are, that are being uh, invested in by retail investors. One last question. Don Stammer last week rang the bell indicating he thought we'd got past the worst of the bear market. Because would you be willing to ring the bell? Do you think we're at the bottom of the bear market and heading up? Well, of course, the thing is, for a market neutral fund, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> I, Diana asked me that question when I was here, mm. uh, sitting at this seat in May, and I said I felt that there was more to go, that this was a uh, a process which um, would be extended. I think I would have to stick with that view. Okay. So still, I won't ring the bell. Still cautious. Still cautious. Rick, thanks for joining us on Money Makers. And you're really upset, Di. So you wanted the bell ring. Yeah, I'm very upset because the bell, I wasn't here last week. I was on holidays and the bell was rung. And anyway, we've been waiting for weeks for someone to ring it, but you, you weren't game enough. 4,815 it was the number he thought on July 15. So that's a, an interesting benchmark. It's awfully close. <laughs> I'll have a call to Don on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much okay. for coming in. Thanks,